Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Brian Kaskovalsian here with G4 Marketing and the Wealthy Contractor. Um, this is our April live training. And today we are going to be talking about one of my favorite marketing tools, one of the most powerful tools that you can have in your arsenal and that is the lowly newsletter i say lowly in jest it's actually very very powerful so um we're a little bit past two o'clock um so i think we are going to get started the other thing too that i did that's different with this webinar is uh a it's later in the month because i've been traveling like crazy um but b we're also doing it in the afternoon at two o'clock, which I've never done before. And um, so I'm kind of gonna see uh, what time is better. I think morning is probably better. If anybody's got any comments about that, um, please let me know. Um, these things are always best live. Uh, we do make them available as replays, but these things are usually best live. All right, so a uh, couple housekeeping items. Um, you can hear me, hopefully. I cannot hear you. Um, if you have a question or a comment, uh, please just go ahead and put it into uh, either the question box or the chat box. I'll be watching that and um, we'll make sure and answer all of your questions. Um, you should also be able to see me. I don't know where I'm at. I don't know if I'm over there or if I'm over there or up there, um, but you should also be able to um, to see me as well. Um, I am going to show you a couple of things, so um, it would be good if you were also um, if you were in front of your computer and you could see me. All right. So um, the topic today is will 2018 finally be the year you have your own company newsletter now my goal here is um to convince you by the end of our time together that you need a company newsletter now whether you do it or you get somebody else to do it for you um that's up to you um the the fact of the matter is every company should have one so i'm going to talk to you about why you should have one and make an argument for that but i'm also going to talk to you about how you actually do it i'm going to show you what we do i've got you know probably almost 20 years of experience um, with newsletters to consumers and to businesses alike and so um, i'm going to show you how also I'll go kind of deep onto how you actually do this all right so let's get going. Uh, so, you know, first off, you know, we all know that marketing and lead generation is getting more expensive. It's not going to get any cheaper anytime soon. And so we have got to come up with ways to um, make our marketing and lead generation dollars more effective and more profitable. Um, competition is also fierce, especially now, you know, when things are good, um, that tends to, uh, bring on more competition. Um, and so, uh, there's a lot out there. Um, consumers generally have more options, both with product and with other contractors that they could use to buy. Uh, whatever it is that you sell. And then finally, consumers are really more distracted today than ever before. I mean, we can thank these things, right, for, um, for the distraction in society today, the um, internet, social media, all the ways that, you know, we can waste uh, time and be distracted uh, online. So we're competing against all of that. And so your job is how do we rise above that? Right. 
Now, everything I'm gonna, everything I've been talking about lately is built on the premise that we are in unique times. We are in a time of growth, a strong economy, very low um, unemployment. Money is flowing in the streets again. Um, people are taking on debt to do all sorts of things, you know, projects, cars, vacation, you name it. Debt is high again. Hopefully not your debt, by the way. Let everybody else have debt. You don't want any, not in your business and not in your personal life, okay? That's just coming from somebody with some experience, okay? So, um, so what I've been talking a lot about is how do you take advantage of what's going on right now in the economy with business and how do you set yourself up for future success? Because look, this is not going to last. And, and mind you, this is not doom and gloom talk. This is opportunity talk. Let's be real. Okay. Anybody that was in business um, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, 13 or 15 years ago knows we were on a ride very similar to this. It looked the same, I mean, it kind of felt the same, it sounded the same, but what eventually ended up happening? It all went the other way. Now, if you're smart, you're gonna use this time to set yourself up so that when things do turn, you are in a very advantageous position, okay? Let other people go out of business. You want to be the one standing and you want to be in a strong financial position and you want to be in a strong position of having a base of customers that that will support you regardless of what's going on in the economy. So I say that right now, if you're if you're not at 35 percent of your business coming from repeat and referral, from the relationship that you have with your customers, two things. One, you your business is at risk. But number two is you are not taking advantage of the opportunity that's in front of you right now. Now, why 35%? Well, 35% is a third of your business. And this is just a starting point. You know, if you're already at 35%, great. What do you have to do to get to 50? 60% of your business coming from the relationships that you have with your customers. Now, there's, you know, obviously there's some practical things here. One is when a third of your business is coming from repeat referral from the relationship that you have to, with your customers, what does that do to your lead costs? It brings them down, right? What does it do to your close rate when you're in front of more of your past customers and your past customers referrals to you your close rates go up so when your lead cost comes down and your close rate goes up what happens you should be making more money okay and ultimately that's what all of this is about okay so 35 percent to me is the minimum absolute minimum if you're below that your business is at risk okay now we're talking about lead generation. Look, I'm all for lead generation. All Everybody's got to be doing aggressive front end lead generation. But also you've got to be thinking about how am I going to build up to a third of my business coming from repeat and referral from the relationship that I have with my customers. So what I suggest is you take a small piece of your marketing budget. For some companies, it's as little as five. For some people, it makes sense to go higher. You know, with the clients that we work with, we generally, if we're doing the work for them, we're generally five to 8% of their budget. That's nothing. That leaves you 90 to 95% for front end lead generation. Go have at it, all right? But devote some of your marketing budget to appreciation, reviews, referrals, and repeat, because these are the things that are gonna help you uh, stay sticky with your customers and help, help you get more of them coming back and buying more from you and referring you to their friends, their family, their neighbors, their coworkers, all right? So that's kind of the basis 
of all of all of this. All right. Um, you see here on the screen that says stop constantly chasing new customers if you're neglecting your old ones. Chasing new customers is expensive and risky. Going after your past customers or making sure that you're developing a strong relationship with your past customers is one of the best things that you can do. It's one of the most productive uses of your uh, efforts. All right. Now, part of that, part of what's going to help you get more referrals, get more repeat business is you have to have a way of staying in front of your customers. Look, the reality of it is that five hours, five days, five weeks, whatever the number is, somewhere in there, if you are not on top of your customer, if you're not following up with them, they will forget about you. And we can't afford to let our customers forget about us. And so what we've got to do is we've got to have a systematic way of staying in touch with them, staying in front of them, reminding them about all of the products and services that we offer, the solutions we provide, and how the hell to get a hold of us, all right? And we have to do this in a way that doesn't look like we're always asking them for more money. This is, by the way, is one of the biggest mistakes that I see people making is that they've got their call centers and, and they're calling, 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 calling their customers. And every phone call is, hey, it's time for you to give us money again. You know, and they're trying to get more and more creative with this. But look, people don't want that. They don't want you harassing them all of the time, asking them to give you more money. And so one of the ways to uh, stay in touch with them in a friendly format, in a way that's only going to help what you're currently doing, including the phone, is with a company newsletter. Now, a company newsletter is great. I mean, there's so many reasons why a company newsletter is great. But one of the things that I like most about it is that it is a very stealth marketing strategy. Now, what I mean by this is it's under the radar. So if you're doing regular advertising and lead generation, your competitors see everything that you're doing. They see your offers, they see everything, but not with the newsletter. When you're communicating directly one-on-one -on -one to your customer base, what you put in there is between you and them. Now, unless your competition has bought from you and they're somehow magically on your customer list, they ain't going to see what you're doing. So it's a very stealth way of marketing, right? Now, here's some other reasons. This is the why portion. OK, this is the boring portion. This is the part where I got to convince you you've got to do this. And I'm not convincing you to do it with me. I'm convincing you you just got to do it. OK, now. We all know advertising for new customers is not getting any cheaper and it's not getting any easier. Competition is not going away. In fact, there's probably more of it today than there was even five years ago to really have long term staying power and to build real wealth in this business you got to have a relationship with your customers, okay? We must do everything we can to prevent our customer from going and buying what we could have sold them from the competition. we got to stay top of mind with our customers because if we don't, they will forget about us. Look, it's not their job to remember you. It's not my client's job to remember me. It's my job to make sure they never forget. OK. Also, if your salespeople are in front of more repeat customers and more referrals, doesn't that give them a little bit of an unfair advantage? Absolutely. We want that. We want an unfair advantage. OK. And then we've also got to do everything that we can, everything that we can to maximize the overall lifetime value of each and every one of our customers okay i don't know if anybody's done a lifetime value exercise 
of what a customer could be worth to you over their lifetime, but I strongly recommend that you do it because the smartest companies, they're not only looking at, well, what's that customer worth to me today? There's also a factor in there of what is that customer worth to me over their lifetime, okay? And when you think like this, when you think like this, you have a much better chance of making it in this business long-term and making it without the pain of debt and the economy changing and, you know, low close rates and high uh, marketing costs, right? Now, I, um, I know a little bit about this, okay? For those of you that are new and have never uh, been on a, uh, one of my trainings, um, I'm gonna spare you my whole long story, um, but I have been in home improvement now for, since I'm 21 years old, I just turned 50, so that is like a really long time. And um, from the time I was 24, no, it was I was 23 turning 24 um, when I graduated from school. It took me a little while because I was working full time as a commission salesperson. Um, I got into business. I've owned five home improvement companies. Um, in 2009, I started a company called G4 Marketing Group with my a partner, uh, both in business and in life, uh, the wonderful Abby, uh, for those of you that know her. Um, and uh, since 2009, and we've been doing this in June, it's going to be nine years that we've been doing this. And basically providing the same services for the last nine years. We have clients that we've had for almost that long believe it or not and um we are you know very fortunate that we work with some really great companies all around the country you know companies as small as a couple million bucks in sales a year all the way up but we have a client that does well over a hundred million dollars a year so we know a little bit about the home improvement industry we know a little bit about your business specifically you know especially if you're you know, any, anything that you're selling in the house that has to do with home improvement, me and Addy are very familiar with that. Uh, the Wealthy Contractor Program came out of, you know, G4 Marketing Group and um, the Wealthy Contractor Program has the podcast, it has these trainings, um, it has newsletters, has all kinds of stuff and they're all free. You get all of that stuff for free. You don't have to buy anything. Um, we're happy to provide all of that um to you all okay so let's talk about how to create successful advertising and lead generation so in this book which i highly recommend from my mentor dan kennedy called the ultimate marketing plan i learned about his results triangle the kennedy results triangle the right market getting the right message through the right media so a market is basically who am I targeting message is what am I saying to get their attention, get them to raise their hand and get them to call me to say, Hey, I want to give you money, you know, and media is how do I get there? How do I get to them? How do I get my message to them now to make successful lead generation or advertising, you have to get all three of these, right? Okay, the degree to which you get these three right is going to dictate your success. Okay, now, one of the things that um, traditional type advertising has is um, with media, you don't really have control over that media. So, for example, with newspapers, with um, with um, internet, with TV, with radio, there's not a lot of control over that. It's controlled by the people that own the media, which by the way, look at some of the most successful companies out there and what are they? They are media companies. Imagine that because they control the eyeballs. Who the person that controls eyeballs controls lots of money. Well, guess what? You have lots of eyeballs that you could control. Those eyeballs are your customers. Now, all advertising and marketing is based on eyeballs. Who's getting it? 
right? How are we getting it to them? This is just an example I pulled, you know, a couple pages out of a magazine called the Home Mag, right? We don't have control over the Home Mag, but we all, what we also don't have control over is, for example, you know, this Millard Systems um, exterior cleaning company, they don't have any control over who else is with them. And when you look at a page like this, look, you've got four ads here competing for those eyeballs, okay? That's why I say you don't really have control over any of those media. Think about TV. You're on for 30 seconds and then boom, they're on to somebody else and something else, okay? So ideally, ideally, what if there was a way that you could control market message and media? I mean, traditionally, market and message, you could control to some degree who you're going to, right? You can control message, definitely. It's all on you. But media, you can't always control. Well, with a newsletter, your own company newsletter, you control market who it's going to message, what you're saying to that audience, and you own the media. You control the media, okay? So I believe that if you are going to do a newsletter, that you do two, okay? You do an email electronic version of your newsletter, once a month okay and then you do a print version of your newsletter as well the most successful companies will do more newsletters meaning uh print newsletters meaning they'll do you know four eight twelve newsletters a year okay now the way that we do it for the majority of our clients is we do 12 email newsletters one a month second thursday of every month like clockwork that email newsletter goes out quarterly january april july and october we do a print newsletter print ink paper stamp mailbox okay that's that is that's what you gotta have Okay, when I talk about a company newsletter, it's great to have an email newsletter. And there are services out there that help you do an email newsletter. Look, I will not do only email for any client. If they, if they offer to pay me, which I've been offered many, many times, I will not do it. Why? Because email alone does not work. Email needs to be a part of a bigger holistic strategy. Okay? So that's why we always do both, an email and a print version, okay? Now, there was a time when people loved to get mail, okay? Then, back in the early 2000s, this started to happen. It's happening a little bit now, but not as bad. Then this happened, okay? And then everybody thought, well, Let's just go to this. Let's just all go digital. Bad move. It doesn't work as effectively as it could if there were both elements. Both elements. You need to have paper, ink, mailbox. You also have, need to have email, digital, inbox, inbox. Okay? So where does that leave us? Okay? That leaves us with the physical print newsletter. Now remember, again, I can come in under the radar with a physical print newsletter. I control the media. I control who it goes to and what I say, right? And some of the other benefits of a company newsletter, again, I'm selling you, I'm gonna switch to how in just a minute, but if you are still not sold, I'm going to keep working on you because this is a powerful, powerful strategy. All right. Now, done right, a company newsletter will help you increase the number of times your business, your, your customer does business with you. Okay. Repeat sales. 
it will increase the number of referrals that you get through a couple of mechanisms. One is just being there over and over and reminding them. You know, the other way is I'll show you what a good referral rewards program looks like. Okay. You can introduce new products and services while also reminding your customers about all of the other products and services that you sell. What is one of the most aggravating things that happens to business owners? You sell one, let's just say you did a roof for, for Mr. and Mrs. Jones, and you just happen to be passing by their house six months, a year, two years later, and guess what? They're having their windows redone. Well, you sell windows, but guess what? It's not your truck that's out in front of their house. It's your competitions, right? Now, I'm not much of a betting man, but I'll tell you what, I would bet you the biggest stake in Texas that you gave me a couple hundred names out of your database of past customers, and if I called all of them, that I will find people in your database that have bought something you sell from your competition. Why? Well, one is, yeah, maybe they didn't like you and they weren't happy with you, but you know what's really the more likely reason? You didn't stay in touch with them. So they forgot about you. They didn't know you also do, oh, I didn't know you do windows. Oh, I didn't know you do siding. Well, we told you three times. Yeah, but you told me a year ago. You told me six months ago. I'm not gonna remember that. You gotta keep in front of them. Newsletters help you build relationships. It keeps your customers away from your competition, okay? It helps you stay top of mind with your customers. Again, you don't want them to uh, forget about you. And newsletters have staying power. They'll stay around, they'll stick around. Unlike an email that has a shelf life of three seconds if they even open it, okay? So some of the great things about mails, mail has to be touched. It's going to a mailbox, they have to touch it. They have to feel it, okay? They're gonna, they're gonna see it, you know? It's there, it's in their box, they gotta touch it, okay? And if you do it right, then they're gonna wanna go inside and they're gonna to want to look at it, okay? The other thing is, think about who your customer is today. Who's buying home improvements? What age group are they in? Guess what? They're in my age group. I'm not a baby boomer, I'm the one that came after. I think I'm Gen X is what they call us. But I'm, I'm 50, I just turned 50. Now, I like, paper and ink. I'll read some stuff online, but I like paper and ink, okay? I still get newsletters. Every month I get magazines. I get real books. Look, I get real books. I get some stuff on my Kindle. That's like fun stuff, but I won't get a real book, you know, through my Kindle because I want to have like the real thing, okay? Got to think about who your customer is today. They like mail. They like to read, okay? So you have to, you know, be there with that. Now, while the millennials, okay, maybe all over social media and their devices, your customers still like stuff they can touch and they can feel. By the way, by the way, let me show you all something. So those of you that can see me, now if I just said what I'm gonna say to you, and I didn't show it to you, you may not believe me because it sounds too fantastic. It sounds nuts. If I was to say to you that the number one digital media company in the world, that by the way, they just released their earnings, they made $9.4 billion in profit last year, okay, their last fiscal year, 9.4 billion in profit, that they use direct mail. Here it is. Look who it is. I'm gonna put it right up to the screen and hopefully you could see it. Google, look, it's mail. It's look, there's, a, there's indicia on it, meaning they paid postage. Look, it says, get your business to show up on Google. Google uses mail. It's here. Why aren't you, <laughs> right? The biggest, most profitable 
media company. I don't know if they're the biggest, but they're probably the most profitable media company in the world. That's all digital. Uses direct mail to get customers. So why aren't you, right? Do you believe that? This thing's been on my desk for like two months. I've been waiting to show you all this thing, right? So I already talked about this with your own company newsletter. You can own your own media. You can control your market and you can control your message. All right. Now, if you're not paying attention to your customers, your competition will. I don't know about you, but I want to defend my customers against my competition. They're mine. I want to protect them. I want to nurture them over time, right? I don't want them to go away and buy stuff from somebody else, okay? Now think about who wants your customer most. It's your competition, right? People that have already demonstrated that they like home improvements, they want to spend money on their houses. Well, who is the number one prospect for your competition? It's your customer. So put a fence around them. Don't let them out, okay? And one of the best ways you can do that is through your own company newsletter, okay? Now, like I said, we do these quarterly, the print newsletter. Now, when, um, when I'm talking about print, and I'm talking about email um, and the how part of it, there's, they're very, very similar. It's just obviously the format is different, okay? Now, um, the way that we kind of do this, and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna take you kind of page by page. I've never done this before. I'm kind of gonna give you the anatomy of a killer, killer newsletter. And, and, and I'm saying that only because of our experience with this, okay? I didn't make this up, by the way. This is from my years and years of study, my years and years of experience in my own companies and my years and years of experience with companies just like yours. All right. I don't, I'm not making this up. I'm not an inventor. What I do is I take what's working and I adapt and I adapt and I test and I tweak to make sure that we've got a great product. Now to have a great newsletter. Okay. Here's the, here's the things that we have in ours. It's called the, ours is called the Happy Home Gazette. By the way, if you're going to put out a newsletter, have a cool, catchy name for it. The one that we used to use in our handyman company, this is a good one. It was called the Handyman Herald, H H, right? Um, with with um, with uh, what we do for our clients, I wanted the word happy in there, so we came up with the Happy Home and we called it the Gazette. So you could look at all of these different names, uh, Happy Home Gazette's a trademark, so don't steal my name, but come up with something that's kind of cute and catchy um, for your company newsletter, all right? Always make sure that you've got a message from you, message from the owner, okay? Um, talk about what's going on in, um, you know, you can get as personal as you want. I have a client that we do a monthly email, a monthly uh, print newsletter for, and he has a section where he gets very personal. Um, he recently talked about his daughter getting married. He shared a letter that that she wrote to him. I mean, it's really very personal. You don't have to get quite that personal, but when you when you um, you want to be human, okay? And and so you just want to kind of engage people and just talk a little bit about you know you include a recipe in there okay this is like a staple you should always have a cool recipe um you can find of course there's millions of recipes online just find something that you like that you think other you know your type of customer would like and include a recipe in there i like to do stuff that's just kind of fun and entertaining so we do a comic and um, sometimes we'll do a fun fact section. We kind of change things up a little bit. The comic is always there. There's always something funny. Um, quote of the month. So I like to be inspiring. So our 
uh, tagline for our newsletter is inspiring news for a happy and healthy home. Again, that's trademarked. So, you know, no stealing, come up with your own. Inspiring news for a happy and healthy home. So I want to inspire in this, okay? We include one home improvement article and I'm gonna show you what it looks like. And it's not about windows. It's not all about site. It's not about your product. The minute you write all about your product, the minute you are going to lose people and they're gonna see it as junk mail, okay? So I'm gonna show you how we do the home improvement article. I like to include family oriented stuff. Uh, sometimes we'll have a general interest or a techie thing. Um, I like, you know, including kind of fun, what's coming, new techie stuff. Now, always an offer. There's always an offer, okay? I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that you can do an offer on, on your newsletter. Um, one is a little mild. One is a little more aggressive, okay? Um, we include you want to have some sort of device for getting people to go inside of the newsletter. So what is my motivation when I get your newsletter? What is my motivation for opening it up and actually going inside of the newsletter? And the way that we do it is we run a movie trivia contest. Again, I'm going to show you all of this just so that you can, so you have a sense of what this looks like. And then finally, finally, you've got to constantly be reminding people about your referral program. Now, if you don't have one, you need to create a referral program, right? And that's a different training for another day, but you need to have a referral program. At its basic core, it's, hey, we appreciate referrals. When you introduce us to somebody, we're gonna give you something, okay? A lot of my clients will do 25 bucks, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, just because money is easier. Uh, but if you're in a small market, you're really close with your customers, you don't have a real big business, um, gifting is really cool. Um, again, it's too much to talk about today, but you've got to have a formal referral program and you've always got to be talking about always bringing it up. Okay. Now I'm going to show you our spring issue, which went out already. A um, couple weeks ago. Remember, we do January, April, July, and October. Um, that's when we send out our uh, newsletter for our clients. Um, by the way, um, part of the reason why we can do newsletters for hundreds of clients is that we come up with essentially with the shell and we customize it for each client so 80 percent of the newsletter is uh is done um we just customize the last 20 uh 20 percent of it okay uh let me close that somebody's trying to call me okay i should be back all right, so as you can see here, um, by the way, this is how we keep our costs down too, because if I had to do custom newsletters for hundreds of clients, it would be ridiculously expensive. Um, so here, um, that's Addy. Um, we do a message from the owner. Now, all of this is we write all of this for our client. Our client isn't doing any of this, none of it. You know, they they get it when their client when their customers get it, um, but um the um the branding is there the phone number is there the website is there of course um but anyway uh, uh this is the message you know we're glad to have you back if you're new to the family welcome spring brings blooming and blah blah our message from the owner is a little different obviously because it's got a cover it can't be real personal um but if you are doing your own newsletter um, get you can get really personal okay um, here is a, here's a quote um, the inspiring quote um, here we've got trivia facts you know just kind of something fun cleaning for two hours burns 200 calories what we want to do here is we want to entertain and engage for a few minutes every quarter 
you know, everybody's attention span is, you know, they're saying like human beings now have the attention span of goldfish, like mm, seconds. Okay. All I want is just a couple minutes. If you could just spend a couple minutes with us every quarter, we've won. Okay. Um, so that is like an example of a facts article. Here we have the funny little comic. It says, I do some spring cleaning, but then I just have to turn right around and do it again next spring. It's cute, it's funny, okay? So we wanna put something in there um, for, to entertain a little bit. Now, this is the, this is the, um, so this is how, let me cover that up, um, but this is how it comes. Uh, this is the back. Let me show you this. This is the this is the mail panel up here, okay? And the the address, the person's address goes here. Um, let me just do something here real quick. Oh, I didn't do it. Okay. Anyway, so um, so this is that, and then the other side of this, the other side of this is our referral rewards contest, okay? So this is how it looks when it shows up at the house. The other page that I showed you here is what happens when you open the newsletter and you go inside, all right? So I kind of showed it to you a little bit in reverse order. But here, this is the mail panel, okay? And what we do is you wanna put what's inside, inside this issue. OK, because you, you, you want to put stuff to, you know, five tips to involve your family with spring cleaning, grilled salmon and pineapple with maple soy sauce. You know, we, you want to do stuff to get people to go inside. OK, so that's one way we get them to go inside. Another way that we get them to go inside is by using our um, movie trivia contest. We always pick like popular movies, people, you know, movies that people would know. Um, uh, or something tied into what's going on right now. Like, for example, when the last Star Wars movie came out, we tied in a Star Wars movie into our trivia contest. Try and, you know, try and match up with what's going on as much in the newsletter as you can, what's going on, you know, currently in society. So here we say, look inside to win free movie tickets. So again, we want them going inside. OK, we want them to engage. We want to spend a couple of minutes with us every quarter. Um, this is our um, referral rewards program. Um, you'll see that we've got a drawing in June. Um, again, the referral program is a whole nother conversation. Um, I may actually do that next month, I think. No. I'm doing something else. I'm doing reviews next month. So maybe I'll put on the calendar to do a full-blown referral program as well. Um, we include, um, you know, we, we customize. By the way, if you're doing a newsletter, you want to use personalization as much as possible, meaning you want to use your customer's name on the newsletter. So you'll notice here it says, hi, Mary and John, Mary and John, okay? You want to use personalization. It's going to help get them engaged. Uh, personalization is huge, okay? So this is about the, the contest. Now, when they open up the newsletter and they go inside, here's what's inside. So we always put the, the recipe is always here on the left. And then right here, we always have a home improvement article, okay? And so, but what it is, is a checklist for maintenance here are the things that you need to do this season in spring in all of these different areas so home exterior uh check your roof and your gutters um air conditioning um on and on okay we have clients most of our clients do windows roofing siding one day bathrooms plumbing and hvac so a little behind the scenes, these article, this article here always includes that stuff, okay? So um, just a little, that's a little thing that we do. Um, okay, five tips to involve the family with spring clean. You'll notice I'm not talking all about windows here. I'm not talking about 
uh, low E glass and why it's so great. I'm not talking about the latest and greatest roofing product um, or roofing shingle. They don't care about that stuff, okay? Now here, you'll see we've got our inspiring article, Never Give Up. It's the story of Harlan Sanders, Kentucky Fried Chicken, the Colonel, okay? Here's our movie trivia contest, okay? So the way that it works is be one of the first three people to email the correct answers and there are the questions, okay? Now we always make sure that we acknowledge who won last season, okay? So we put their names here. We don't say where they are because our clients are all over the country. So just like with the referral rewards program, when we show a winner or we talk about winners, we don't say where they where they live. Here, this is the, like your techie article, you know, smart items for your smart home. Now, this section over here is always custom for all of our clients. This section is one of two things. It's either like this one, this one is thanking people for making referrals. And I've, I've uh, this gray box here is there purposely. I put it there so that you don't see the names. Um, but there's a list of names here, and it's basically saying thank you for your referrals. We're acknowledging people that made referrals. Very powerful referral strategy, by the way. All right. The other thing that we use this section for is the offer. So if we are not doing, and I'm going to show you in just a second, if we're not doing an insert that makes the offer into the newsletter, then the offer goes right here. Now you'll notice, by the way, you'll notice that our newsletter, okay, and this is what I recommend for all of you to start out with, if you, especially if you don't have one, don't get crazy and try and make this 16, uh, eight pages or 16 pages. We do four pages. We have the ability to do a whole lot more, but we keep it right now, unless I come up with some reason why I need to add four more pages to it, we keep it at four pages. It's basically an 11, 11 by 17 sheet of paper folded in half, okay? So there you go. That's the main newsletter. That's how a winning newsletter is constructed. This is what it looks like. Make sure, look, you don't have to have crazy fancy graphics. Um, if, if, if you don't have, um, so we have design people on staff. And so we use our design people to, you know, really come up with, with really kind of cool and engaging designs. But look, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. In fact, when we first started doing newsletters back in the late 90s, they were, you know, they were off of Microsoft Publisher. If anybody remembers Microsoft Publisher and how basic that stuff was that's what we did and you know what you could still do newsletters like that today okay doesn't have to be this done up now for some of our clients the more aggressive clients and the ones that have multiple products and that have call centers okay we do an insert into the newsletter. So inside of the newsletter is another sheet of paper that's eight and a half by 11, it's two-sided, that basically sells, okay? And this is our hardcore marketing piece. Now, it's in a um, very attractive wrapper. It's in a wrapper that is friendly and engaging okay the wrapper is not all about selling 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 it's about the recipe and the cute articles and the you know but this this is where you promote other products and services this is where you make an offer okay I'm, and here i'm just showing you one side but look at this we've got pretty aggressive offers on this one you know five hundred dollars off a thousand dollars off Okay, we're giving all you know benefits. Here's why. 
Okay, again, I covered up, these are, you know, these are not usually here. There's a big logo, company logo here. Um, and uh, so this is something that we do for some of our clients that I recommend if you, again, if you sell more than one product, you can include an insert in with the newsletter. It's kind of like, think about how a newspaper is, you know, it's the same idea, putting a newsletter insert in um, is, is kind of the same idea. Now, for those of you with call centers, or, you know, to me, a call center is anybody that's on the phone. It could be one person, it could be a hundred, doesn't matter, okay? That's what I mean by a call center. So if you have somebody that can call behind the newsletter, okay, this will increase your repeat business dramatically, okay? Now think about something. Most people that have call centers and they're calling past customers, every phone call is, hey, it's time for you to give us more money. It's time for you to give us more money. There's nothing to talk about. There's nothing, oops, there's nothing friendly and fun to talk about. Well, guess what? If you're sending them a newsletter like this, it's a very different conversation. The conversation starts off more like, hey, did you get our Happy Home Gazette newsletter this month? Great. Hey, what do you think about that recipe? Have you tried it yet? Or if you're not comfortable just having this conversation with a um, uh, someone that's going to be a new client, is if you're not comfortable talking about a recipe, talk about the movie, the movie trivia contest. If you're not if you're not comfortable talking about the movie trivia contest open with the article that you're most comfortable with. Talk about the Harlan Sanders. Hey, did you read that article about never giving up? Wasn't that cool? And you start a conversation. You have a real conversation, a human being to a human being, not just a robot that's saying, hey, it's time for you to give me more money. This will boost, not only will boost your overall call center results, but man, it boosts the results of a newsletter by 300 to 500%, okay? So just sending a newsletter in and of itself without a follow-up phone call will produce. But from my experience, you follow it up with a phone call, you can increase your results by three to five times, All right? So um, does anybody have any questions, um, any questions about, about this? Just go ahead and put it into the question box. And while I'm waiting to see if anybody has any questions, one of the things, you know, for those of you that, that might be interested in having somebody do it for you so you don't have to worry about it and getting access to the Happy Home Gazette, um, having an email newsletter and having the referral program, um, we'd love to talk to you and talk to you about you know, um, how the, the Happy Home Gazette might be able to help you. The next issue, April's done, this season is closed, um, but our next issue is the summer issue. Um, it's gonna go out in mid-July, meaning that everything's gotta be done and designed and booked uh, by the end of June. So if you're interested in talking uh, um, to somebody here about newsletters, we're happy to have the conversation with you whether we're the right partner for you or not we're happy to have that conversation um, with you um somebody's asking me about cost for a newsletter you know cost is 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 going to vary on quality and whether or not you do first class or you do bulk generally with our clients we start off with um, first class, depending on the number that we're doing. If you're doing under, uh, well, let me say this. The first time you do a newsletter, you wanna go first class. So that alone is like 47 cents, okay? And then there's the printing and um, and all of that, which is actually the minor cost in this, where, where, where the real cost comes in is content creation and design. Um, our clients pay, you know, as little as a dollar, and change um, up to two dollars per issue depending on how many are being delivered and whether there's an insert or no insert so like for example if you've got a thousand customers that you want to go to you're only talking probably 15 1600 bucks a quarter to get this done 
for you. And um, so it's not a lot of money at all, but it's but it could be powerful if it's done if it's done right. Anybody else? Any other questions? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up a launch ball. So you should see on your screen, you should see the um, request for strategy session. Um, go ahead and um, just make a selection. I'm going to leave that open for a minute before I um, close close up here. Uh, just go ahead and put, you know, yes, not sure, maybe, or no. And uh, we will make sure and follow up with you. Just go ahead. About half of you have filled out the poll. Just click it real quick. Just yes, not sure, maybe or no. And we will be happy to acknowledge. All right, come on. There's a few of you. I see you. You're not just hit the button. Hit the button. <laughs> All right, cool. I'm going to close that out. All right, so um, anybody have any questions? Hold on, question. Oh, thanks, Karen. Afternoon is better for you for webinars. Okay, that's one vote. I appreciate that. Afternoon is good, that's from Mindy, okay. Cool. Okay. All right. Well, thank you everybody for being here. I hope you got some value out of this. And um, I hope that I've convinced you that you need a newsletter, a company newsletter. Um, I hope that I have shown you how to put one together and um, get it out there. You're welcome, Corey. My pleasure. Um, and if there's anything that I can do to help you, um, there'll be follow-up emails that go out after this. Uh, just, uh, you know, uh, reply back and I am happy to help you with, uh, with anything in your business that is, is, uh, going on. Obviously not just, I could talk about a few more things rather than just newsletters. Um, hopefully you all are listening to the podcast, um, next week for episode number 40, number 40. Um, I've got a, a killer uh, episode for you. So we'll be on the lookout for that. You're welcome, Mindy. Oh, this is a good question. Yes, if we do the newsletter for our clients, um, we do have the ability to do the email newsletter as well. However, we have to have a conversation about how that works. Uh, because we are not spammers and we got to be careful about how we do that. Um, but generally, if you do the newsletter with us, um, the print newsletter is included, the email newsletter is included, and the referral rewards program is included. So you get all of that stuff with G4 if you do the newsletter. Wow, so it's right on the dot at three o'clock, one hour exactly. Thank you all. Um, I, I hope you have a great end of the month, just a few days left to hit your numbers. Hope you're making a ton of money and, uh, until next month, uh, I'll be back on my regular schedule, uh, next month. So I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you all. Bye.